He's rich. There's assassins for hire. Some people have an entrepreneurial spirit, Janine. Welcome to Books and Banter, a podcast about books. I'm Janine, a library clerk. And I'm Jess, a branch admin. And we both work at the Winkler branch of South Central Regional Library. In this podcast, we talk about books with our own twist. We read the first half of the book and predict where it might be going, and then finish reading the book and discuss the second half. There will be snark, there will be spoilers, and depending on the book, there may be references to violence, sex, and other adult topics. So if that's not for you, stop listening now. All right, let's get into this week's book. Today we're going to be talking about the book Homecoming by Kate Morton. Adelaide Hills, Christmas Eve, 1959. At the end of a scorching hot day, beside a creek in the grounds of a grand country house, a local man makes a terrible discovery. Police are called, and the small town of Tambula becomes embroiled in one of the most baffling murder investigations in the history of South Australia. Many years later, and thousands of miles away, Jess is a journalist in search of a story. Having lived and worked in London for nearly two decades, she now finds herself unemployed and struggling to make ends meet. A phone call summons her back to Sydney, where her beloved grandmother, Nora, who raised Jess when her mother could not, has suffered a fall and is seriously ill in hospital. At Nora's house, Jess discovers a true crime book chronicling a long-buried police case, the Turner family tragedy of 1959. It is only when Jess skims through its pages that she finds a shocking connection between her own family and this notorious event, a murder mystery that has never been satisfactorily solved. An epic story that spans generations, Homecoming asks what we would do for those we love, how we protect the lies we tell, and what it means to come home. This is the seventh book by author Kate Morton, and is a standalone, as I believe all of her books have been so far. Um, It has a list of bestseller places. I'm not going to go through them all. I don't know why I put that there. (laughs) Anyways, the New York Times bestseller, Sunday Times bestseller, and on and on and on and on. Kate Morton was born in South Australia, grew up in the mountains of Southeast Queensland, and now lives with her family in London and Australia. She has degrees in dramatic art and English literature, and harbored dreams of joining the Royal Shakespeare Company until she realized that it was words she loved more than performing. Kate still feels a pang of longing each time she goes to the theatre and the house lights dim. I fell deeply in love with books as a child and believe that reading is freedom, that to read is to live a thousand lives in one, that fiction is a magical conversation between two people, you and me, in which our minds meet across time and space. I love books that conjure a world around me, bringing their characters and settings to life so that the real world disappears and all that matters from beginning to end is turning one more page. And that's a quote from the author, which I thought was very beautiful. And which I will say, one thing I love about Kate Morton is her prose, her writing style. I just... Oh, she's very, very good. She's a very good writer. It's very captivating, and it's, like, you feel like you're you're there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, anyways, that's a little bit about the book. I do want to talk about the cover, because the cover of this book is beautiful. We literally chose this book based on the cover. (laughs) Jess looked at it, and she was like, oh, this is a pretty cover. We should read this one. And I was like, which one? And she told me, and I was like, yes, I have that book at home. I've been meaning to read it. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad that we have started this one. Yes. Like, the cover itself is absolutely gorgeous. Like, it Mm -hmm. is a a bit of description. (laughs) Um, Dark blue forest leading to a manor house with gold embossing on the cover it is beautiful Mm -hmm. i'm a sucker for a beautiful book Mm -hmm. and this one honestly is just yeah gorgeous yep they did an excellent job with the cover so i will say um i know that this one has been quite popular it came out i believe in 2023 i'm just gonna double check that yep but i think closer to the beginning of 2023 Mm -hmm. And I know towards the end of the year, we still had, like, holds on this yep. book. <clears throat> so well, it, She's quite a popular author. She is. And so, yeah, I've read most of her books, but it's been a long time since I read one. I didn't read her one before this yet, um, but I've read all the other ones, and it's been so long. But as I was reading this book, I was like, oh, yeah, this is why I love her books. And, uh, yeah. I mean, they're long. This is a big book. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't felt long at all, for the most part. No, no. Like, it took me a little bit to get into it. 
because yeah. it was like getting super interesting in Australia, and then they bumped to Jess in London, where I'm like, no, back, <laughs> <laughs> go back to where it was. <clears throat> when? So like Jess's like first or second parts, I'm like, oh, go back to the other one. So <laughs> it kind of had to get yeah, through that. You and have into to get it. into both parts of the yeah. book. So that is true. And it kind of bounces back and forth between the summer of 1959. Sorry, Christmas Eve 1959. Yeah. And, and then more present ish. Present day. day. 2018? I think so. Yeah. It starts off with New Year's Day of 1959. Mm-hmm. And from Isabel's point of view. And it sort of, that part sort of ends on a bit of a cliffhanger as well. Yeah. Somebody is coming onto her yard. And. We don't know who that is yet, and I'm very curious what that's all about. The curiosity is killing me. And because she was expecting a delivery she didn't want anybody to know about mm-hmm. either, but the person who was coming wasn't the delivery person. No. So but I, he did have a package. Yeah. So I don't know. It's, yeah, that part is bothering me because <laughs> I need to know what's <laughs> happening. And that's the thing about, like, Kate Morton. Already there's been some, like, questions, and I'm like, well, oh, what about... And then... They get answered, but then mm-hmm. there's more questions. For every right? qu- question that she answers, she adds two more questions. Exactly. On that. Yep. Exactly, and that's the beauty of it, though, because it just keeps you, it keeps you into it, mm-hmm. and it keeps you, um, keeps you reading because you want to know what's yeah. going to happen. She's a really, she's really good at that. Well, oftentimes when a mystery book is this thick, and it can get a little bit boring in the middle mm-hmm. because it's kind of like all oh, the lead up the murder yada yada and then we get the like we're waiting for lab results to come back yeah <laughs> and then there's the final thing like I wouldn't really class this as a, as a murder mystery or anything like that um but oftentimes there's that like kind of let down in the middle mm-hmm. not yet hasn't hasn't hit that at all yet no and I, I hope it doesn't <laughs> no the one thing I will say though there is um so it talks about the true crime book that she found so the text of that book is in this book. Mm-hmm. I don't really care for that book. It's a that little part, dull. I could have done with a bit shorter on that. Mm-hmm. It's I mean, very detailed. It's an interesting way of giving you the information, mm-hmm. but I kind of feel like it could have been shortened down a bit. Yeah, it's just very detailed. And there was one part, Jess was reading it, and... Not me, the other one. Yeah. <laughs> Jess, the character, the writer of the true crime book that she's reading speaks about the situation with knowledge as if they were there and like they know what the people oh here it is how had he done it how did he claim to know what isabel felt about her life in australia or her husband's increasingly frequent trips abroad how did he know that isabel struggled with being an outsider distanced from her children unnerved by the sparseness of the landscape like he the the author of that book seems to know Mm -hmm. so much and he knows exactly what they're thinking and what like exactly what happened at the house that yeah. morning, like all of their movements, he writes in quite a fiction-like manner, mm-hmm. as though he knows what the characters are thinking at all times. Yeah, which you definitely don't, because he wasn't there. But, <laughs> but was he? Got the... So the author's name is Daniel Miller. Uh huh. I'm wondering if it's possibly uh, so. Nora, right? That's the grandma. Mm-hmm. Jess's grandma's name is Nora. She was married at one point. She was pregnant. She was at the house. Her husband didn't leave her until after the baby was born. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm wondering if Daniel Miller is a pseudonym and that Daniel Miller was her husband. Is it even a pseudonym? Because... No, he was Mr. Bridges. Right, he was Mr. Bridges. Yeah. What did... At some point she had a hyphenated last name. Turner Bridges. Turner Bridges? Yeah. Where am I thinking? There was another Miller somewhere. I'm not sure. But oh, she, I don't remember. Don't read three books in one day. Nora was definitely there that day mm-hmm. when the family was killed. Yes. She was married at the time because it said that her husband didn't leave her until after. Right, yeah. And so I'm wondering if that, if, I feel like Daniel Miller is not the author's real name. Considering she's found pretty much no information about him, mm-hmm. it is a little bit suspicious. I don't know, but... That's the only way I feel like the author could know so much. Yeah. Right? Unless is, he was the guy coming up the drive. But that was New Year's Day, and this was Christmas Eve. Those were separate days. Hold on. You're talking about the beginning? Oops, You're talking about the beginning? Yeah. When she's setting up for the party? It says New Year's Day, 59. And this happened Christmas Eve on 59. 
Right, 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 right. So that was almost Again, a don't whole year. Three books in one day. <laughs> almost a whole year later. Yeah. Yeah. No. So that's um that was one of my theories. I don't know. Because mm-hmm. I feel like there's going to be more secrets revealed in the second half. I would certainly hope so. I've and got I, questions. There's gotta be something about the author. Well, this was by all accounts his only book. Yep. He's quite difficult to track down. Mm-hmm. It was through a trust or a foundation or something. Something like that. That she actually managed to get a hold of him. Or not a hold of him, because he was dead. Or tried to contact him. Yeah. And once Mr. Bridges left Nora, they had absolutely no contact. hmm As far as we know from this book. Yeah. And so she says it was because of the baby. Uh, but I she wonder... says it was because of the baby. Here's my theory. I might be way off. I think Nora has a miscarriage, and I think Polly is... Baby Thea. Baby Thea. Yep. I agree. Now. That's also... How that comes about is a good question, but that's my my working theory at the moment mm-hmm. of where the babies come from or where the babies go. Yep. And because the, I think the baby buried in the garden... Is Nora's. Is Nora's, and it was buried intentionally. Yep. That's it what I... It wasn't dogs and, you know... No. Dango took my no, baby No, no. No, that, that's also my thought. Garden is soft dirt. Yeah. It took me a bit to, like, I was trying to figure out, was Nora actually one of the kids? Or, I don't, no, at first I thought Nora was baby Thea, but then I thought, no. I was trying to work out who was baby Thea, because I was mm-hmm. trying to figure out the dates, because her mom wasn't really mentioned for the first little bit. Mm-hmm. And then when they started mentioning her mom, I'm like, oh, okay, that's So, her. yeah, baby Thea was born in 59, so I was trying to figure, I was trying to math it out. Yeah. Um... And then I thought, well, it must be Polly then, who is mm-hmm. baby Thea. Which would also explain why Polly and Nora aren't exactly simpatico with the moment. Yeah. yeah. My question, too, is, is it more of a kidnapping situation? Or is it more of a take my child and assume it's yours situation? Because by all accounts, what's the brother's name? Thomas? Thomas? I think Thomas. Let's call him Thomas. <laughs> Thomas, uh... She's a nice enough fellow, but not exactly winning dad of the year. No. I don't... Not abusive or anything, just very absent and kind of... Yay, Project Seagull, blah blah blah. I There's the possibility, and I'm probably way off base, that Nora has the baby, and Thomas knows that it's Thea. But what do you want? I can't take Australia anymore. I'm going to live in London. London, you keep the baby. I'll start a new life. It's possible that he knew that, but not right away. Not right away, I don't think. Because no. they thought that the baby was missing. Yeah. I don't um, think it would be a no immediately kind of thing so much mm-hmm. as a, your baby looks suspiciously like mine. Yes. And yeah. w- it would also explain why they haven't spoken in mm-hmm. how many years. I would be very surprised if it came out that Polly was actually Nora's biological. I'd be shocked. Yeah. But there's uh, definitely more to the story. Mm-hmm. I hope that it's, that's not the only surprise in the second half, because that would be very disappointing. I'm really, 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 really annoyed that they killed Evie. <laughs> She's a funny because little kid. Because she is hilarious. She's I love that kid. Adorable. Like, full on, like, has her leather satchel, has specimen jars. Yeah. I'm going to be a naturalist on my tricycle. Mm-hmm. I'm going to break into that old man's shed. Yes. Like. That she's breaking into his <laughs> shed also, I thought was hilarious. And then he's kind of like, mm, yeah, there's a girl who wanders around, but it's fine. <laughs> like, she just seems like such a little character. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, you killed her. <laughs> I know. I know. I wonder, though, too. Or. I'm attached to all the kids now, knowing that they die. I know. That's the thing I hate. <laughs> or did Nora poison them? Like, mm. they thought it was Isabel and it was like a murder-suicide. Mm-mm. No? I don't think so. Okay. Just a thought. I don't think it was Nora. Nora's whole shtick has been family, family, family. That's true. It goes against everything she's been up until this point, and there's no reason. Like, by all accounts, she and Isabel get along very well. Mm-hmm. Love the kids. Great aunt. Having a baby herself. Got along with her brother. There's yeah, no true. motive right now. That's true. Unless she already knew that her baby was dead. You're still not going to murder an entire family for that. How desperate was she for a baby? I don't think she was that desperate. Given the fact that she stated multiple times that she wanted to be, like, have a big family. Yeah. And that she was thrilled that her 
baby would be born into ready weight cousins and right. that kind of but thing. But she also I, did struggle with infertility. Yeah, I don't think she would have gone that far. I'm just, I think Nora being the progressive woman that she was would have gone with adoption or something instead. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, I might be wrong. I could be reading her entirely wrong. She's been unconscious for the entire book, so I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. It's hard to tell, right? I think it's more likely that Matilda accidentally killed them all. Oh, because she was trying to force a miscarriage. Because Evie got something from the shed Mm -hmm. in a specimen jar. Australia is known for its poisonous plants of many kinds. (laughs) And the gist I got was they're trying a DIY abortion. Yeah. (laughs) Which do not do. No. So I'm wondering if they got the wrong plant, they got the wrong dosage, and somehow there's cross-contamination, like you boiled in a teapot, and then Isabel made tea for everyone for the picnic, and Australia's very potent. (laughs) Like, if that, because... I don't think it was an accident, though. I don't know. I'm I'm going to be a little bit disappointed if it was an accident, Mm -hmm. because it's kind of anticlimactic. I feel like there's something more there, and more than just, like, a standard murder-suicide. Yeah. I feel like the Matilda option, though, is more likely than the Nora option. Possibly. So. Thing is, the way that they died, did they... They didn't do any kind of talk screen, did they? I mean, it's Mm, 1960s. Yeah. I'm not sure. By all accounts, they were lying on a blanket and basically looked like they'd gone to sleep. Mm -hmm. So, is there anything else that could do that? It's poison of some kind, presumably. Right, but somebody else yeah. could have poisoned them. Yeah. Who's the host maid? What's her name? Oh, there was two. Bethany? Unless. Doesn't seem like the type. Unless. Nora was all about family. Maybe Isabel was cheating on her husband and Nora found out and was very upset on behalf of her brother. Eh. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm not trying to be like, <laughs> no, Nora's a saint. Yes, you are. <laughs> I no, just she's got secrets though. Feel like Nora would have gone to her brother and went like, eh, I don't know. Like to me, my brothers are married. If I found out one of their wives was cheating, I wouldn't be like, well, I guess I'll just have to murder them and spare him the pain. Do you think Thomas would rather have a cheating wife or a dead wife and three dead kids? Well, he didn't seem to care about his family anyways. I don't want to say he didn't care. It just seemed like he was the type that was very much like, I'm going to do this project, I'm going to do that project. Yeah. And emotionally immature rather than emotionally unavailable. Okay, sure. He seemed like the type that when Dad was home, we'd have fun and we'd build mud huts in the kitchen and Mother would have to do all the discipline. As opposed to, go away, child, I'm in my study. Like, <laughs> that's the vibe I got from him. Okay. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I guess we'll see. One thing I'm not sure if I like or hate is the fact that Thomas is ruled out completely and entirely because he's in London <laughs> as, as a murder suspect. Well, he's in London. He's rich. <laughs> There's assassins for hire. Some people have an entrepreneurial spirit, Janine. <laughs> so a can-do attitude, you think, despite distance. So maybe he paid Nora. Me, eh, I don't think Nora would have done it for money. <laughs> well, you don't know. She had a she, struggling marriage, yeah. and her parents had lost their fortune. So she was trying to rebuild. And you think murdering her family was the best way to do that? People have done less for less, more for less. At this point, I think. The most we can accuse Nora of is kidnapping. <laughs> All right, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I don't know. I think Thomas could have done it, as in he hired it out. Maybe. I think it's just as likely as Nora having done it. Although <laughs> you're you're determined that Nora is a murderer. <laughs> no, I, I'm actually not. I'm <laughs> maybe just... Nora hired aliens and got them to do it. Nora definitely did it. I'm just Nora is an alien. <laughs> I'm determined for you to acknowledge that that could be a possibility, I think is more where I'm going with all of this. She was heavily pregnant at the time. So? It doesn't take going much to Going for add. a picnic in the sun was too much for her. She could still sprinkle a little poison in their iced tea. And take the chance that she accidentally cross-contaminates and kills herself or her baby? I'm not saying she did it. I'm just... 
saying it You just want me to be, admit that Nora could be a it killer. It could be her. And won't you feel funny when it turns out that she is? I find that hilarious, actually. <laughs> because even when she's unconscious and, like, barely lucid or whatever, her refrain tends to be, don't take my baby or don't take her away. Yeah. But that goes to show you how desperate she was for a baby. She had a very traumatic event, followed by another very traumatic event, followed by another relatively traumatic event. And yes, the divorce is only relatively traumatic. I don't think... Her, her sister-in-law and her four nieces and nephews were murdered. Matilda, the dude. <laughs> I forget his name. Jake? I think so. Matilda, Jake, Evie, Thea. Thea wasn't murdered. She's Polly. You're going on the assumption that Thea was <laughs> murdered at the moment. Missing. Three murdered, one missing. Happy now? Yes. Which then kicked off a early labor, where at this point we're assuming that she miscarried. Shortly after, her husband divorced her, or she divorced him, which more power to you, go, go for it. But there was a fair amount of trauma occurring in a very short period of time. As your brain starts to break down <laughs> in old age... It's not uncommon to go back to the most traumatic events because they're the ones that stick the most in your brain. And to be reliving those moments of, no, please don't take my baby, I can't lose another kid. I don't think that's evidence for how... I don't think that's evidence that she's so desperate for a baby that she would kill other babies. I think we're at an impasse. (laughs) Janine thinks Nora did it. I think she didn't. I'm not saying that I think she did. I think it's possible that she could have. I think it's possible anybody could have killed him. I think it's possible that Percy did it. I don't think Percy did it, but... Percy didn't do it. Come but on But it's now. possible he was in the area. They were already dead when he found them. That's what he said. <sighs> Not Percy. Come on now. Percy wouldn't do that. He's so Maybe nice. Maybe it was Kurt. Maybe it was Kurt. Mm, it could be. I haven't ruled him out. I have. Okay. Yeah, because he wanted to marry... Yeah. Her. Marcus is more likely than Kurt is. Yeah, that's true. I hope that the the true crime part of the book, the true crime novel part of the book is almost done because I am done with that. Those parts were the least interesting to me. Oh, you mean like the... The book within the book. The book within the book. Yeah. I did not care for that part. It's one of those things where I'm fine with if it's kind of short, brief, to the point. Yeah. But... It's like a whole... We've read a couple other ones that have books within books. Yeah. And that just starts to irk me. Like... It does a little... I'm reading this book. I don't want to read that book. I know. Like, what's the other one that had that? Wasn't it Stephen King? Mm, I don't think it was a Stephen King. I don't know. It's probably a Brandon Sanderson. It was not. <laughs> but speaking of Brandon Sanderson, like... This time you brought him up. It wasn't me. Everybody, everybody on social media is reading Mistborn, I feel like. That's because it's good. But Although, I am reading one right now. Uh, Stephen Leeds. He has... It's not multiple personality disorder, but he's got, like, 40 different hallucinations, and he's filthy rich. So in his mansion, he has rooms for all of his different hallucinations. (laughs) It's only two hours long. Even you could handle this one. It's hilarious. And he buys things for his hallucinations without realizing it. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if I could handle that. One of his hallucinations is, like, a calligraphy expert, and, like, her room's just full of pens. Another one of them is a security expert. His room's just full of guns. Oh my gosh. That, no, I, I And couldn't. he's a butler. It's fabulous. I couldn't do that. I will admit, though, I almost bought book two in the Mistborn series. <laughs> I'll get you yet. Well, but everybody, Brandon Sanderson will. Well, I didn't hate it, but I didn't feel the need to just go out and get it right away. But now everybody's reading it, and so I'm like, well, there must be, there must be something there that I'm missing. I do you think you might like the second series in Mistborn better than the first series? Yeah. But it's, it's more funny. There's a guy that steals things, which I find endlessly amusing. Anyway, sorry, that was a... I would like to state, again, for the record, it was not me that it brought was up not, Andrew, Brandon Sanderson. Nope, it was Janine. It was me, 100%. So add that to the count. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like, what, 5,000 to 1? Yes. <laughs> Ah, yeah. My sister also made fun of me when I told her she should read Brandon Sanderson, and now she's like, have you read the newest Brandon Sanderson yet? (laughs) I have, and I'm going to spoil it for you. So I'm kind of regretting it. (laughs) No. But also, speaking of newest, I saw that Rebecca Yaros was starting on book three now. Mm. uh, Is there a publication date? No. We finally have a publication date for the fifth book, The Stormlight Archives, and I'm so happy. (laughs) Now I'm going to spend this year going through the first 
four full books of Stormlight Archives, the two shorter books, and another novella that's tendentially related in preparation for the fifth book of Stormlight <laughs> Archives coming out, because one must prepare for Sanderson. Mm. It is so good. It is so good. That will be me when the third fourth wing book comes out. Oh, that will also be me when the third fourth wing book comes out. I got out, the, but... the holiday edition of fourth wing for Christmas. It's mm. got like a, a reddish cover that kind of matches Iron Flame, and it's got the black edges as well. It's so pretty. I, I opened it up and I was like, I'm going to sleep with this tonight. <laughs> and then I opened up the, the new Pioneer Woman cookbook and I was like, this one's coming too. <laughs> Poor Mike, there's no room anymore. <laughs> no, too many books. going to roll over and get poked in the eye with a hardcover. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't actually sleep with my books, but they were pretty. No, then they might get damaged. Exactly. You can't have that. Can't, can't have that. Anyways. Yeah, I'm a sucker for pretty books. I do feel like the... Homecoming, like Kate Morton book here, that we're actually supposed to be talking about. A hardcover needs gold. Um, on the edges? On the edges, yeah. It needs something on the edges. I need a copy with, like, some kind of pretty edge. Like, I haven't checked to see if there's any other editions or, like, mm-hmm. covers or whatever. I think there is a different then. cover that's not as pretty as this one. Well, I feel like they just need to take this one, put it in hardcover, and then gold on the... Mm. What's that called? <laughs> Drawing a blank on it. I, me too. The edges of the pages only need gold, either way. But yeah, no, that would be pretty. Gorgeous. That would be pretty. I'm such a sucker for a good cover mm. and a bad cover. It's got to be really, really good or really, really bad. Nothing in between. <laughs> I love the absolutely horrible paperback romance covers. The ones that are only ever published online oh, and no. never actually have paper copies p- printed, because the artwork on them is awful. It's brilliant. <laughs> There's guys with, like, horns in the middle of their forehead and one sticking out the back of their head, and they're oh, supposed to be, like, centaurs, and, like, it's just, it's the terrible, like, fantasy fiction. There's wings coming out everywhere. Wings shouldn't be. It's it's glorious. It's so bad. That sounds terrible. Yeah, I, I compare them quite a lot to Victorian Christmas cards. Ah! Now that was a treat for the <laughs> eyes. Yes. So anyways, back, <laughs> We're getting off topic. back to the homecoming book. Um, I, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. It's just so good. I don't really have any, like, predictions for the second half, for lack of a better term. No, except that Polly is baby Thea. Yeah. That's... And I think Polly knows that she's baby Thea. Do you think? I think so. Okay. The only other explanation I can come up with why she and Nora don't talk is because Nora is probably a bit smothery. Mm, possibly. More of a smother than a mother. <laughs> But, yeah. I'm going to write this down. So. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I, I don't think that it was murder-suicide, though. No. I think if it was murder-suicide, we wouldn't have a book. No. And definitely, though, she was struggling from some kind of postpartum depression. Mm-hmm. Um, There's definitely something else going on there. Yeah, but I don't know that it was enough to... Although she was acting sort of suspicious... When she was getting everything ready. Yeah, but is it suspicious or is it s- suspicious because of the stuff that happened after? Like wandering yeah. around in your garden and staring off into the blue unknown. Yeah. Could just be her regular morning walk, you know, get a bit of peace and quiet away from the kids because it sounded like Jacob did not know how to play the piano. <laughs> is it only suspicious because it's put into the light of what happened after? Well, I think she also said something that sounded suspicious to Nora before they left. Like, thanking her or something, like... Yeah, but it's also Christmas. Yeah. The gifts, the, like, extra days off, that kind of thing. Yeah. It was Christmas. Like, it it doesn't have to be seen as this was a woman who knew she was going to die and either want to get people out of the way or... No, it doesn't have to be, but it it could be. It could be. It definitely could be. Yeah. But it was also Christmas, so it doesn't have to be. Yeah. If somebody said that did that on, like, Tuesday, June 14th, be more suspicious. (laughs) Like, don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. I'm reading a book right now where instead of using the word suspicious, they always say sus, and it drives me batty. It feels a bit try-hard? Yeah. I yeah. don't I don't like it. That book, coincidentally, is also set in Australia. <laughs> I don't know how I happen to be reading two Australia books at the moment, but... I did like the fact it was set in Australia, because... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Again, I went into this not knowing anything. I did not read the back <laughs> cover. I did not read you anything. You just thought, pretty book, must read. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> so I was reading. I'm like, oh, cool, it's Australia. Yeah, I know. It was a nice refreshing change because so often they're like, well, London. 
Yeah. Not not even Britain. No, just London. London is a big setting. Or, like, North American. Yeah. No, not even North American, because that would include Canada and Mexico when we never go there. <laughs> There's no stories in Canada or Mexico. That's not true. However, I also... So, many years ago, we traveled to Australia to visit some friends. Currently, one of our cousins is living there temporarily she says um so she was home at christmas so we were talking all things australia tim and tams we did not talk about tim tams <gasps> oh, no that's a shame because tim I tams know. are glorious tim tams are the best do you know the tim tam slam yes okay i have never tim tam slammed because i don't like tea <laughs> but we could do it with hot chocolate i think i'm not a huge hot chocolate person okay. either anyway i just i'd eat my tim tam straight <laughs> In Australia, there are many, many, many flavors of Tim Tams that mm-hmm. you cannot buy here. Uh, disappointingly. Um, anyways. I don't think I haven't considered getting them shipped in. <laughs> so reading this, the way she writes is like, I wasn't even in that part of Australia when I was there, but it was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Or, you know, those kinds of, like, it just felt familiar. Mm-hmm. And it's something about the way she writes because, I like, I spent three weeks there, like, in 2006 <laughs> you know at like now I own 20 years now <laughs> almost but yeah so it just it it feels familiar which I also think is what I like about it she f- is very good at putting you in the location mm-hmm. like all oh, the one thing I will say it keeps throwing me off is it's I know it's 1959 mm-hmm. my brain keeps thinking 1920s <laughs> In my brain, it's 1920. Something about the horse in the general store, but there's still cars. It's <laughs> It seems like 1920s, I don't want to say 1920s America, but quite similar in terms mm. of technology and that kind of thing. So, But she is a, a beautiful writer. Yes, 10 out of 10 recommend. I'm not even, not even done it yeah, yet. That says something. Mm-hmm. Considering what I did to the other book, that does say something. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first one of hers that you've read, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You should definitely read more. I'll add it to my very, very, very long list. I know, right? I've got a good 300 hours of audiobooks to get through by the end of the year. <laughs> so, we shall see. Yeah, but... I think we've run out of things to say. I <laughs> we have to read the rest of it. I think we have to read the... I, well, yes, we have to read the rest, but it's going to be, I hope, good, and I hope some surprises. Yeah, I don't like knowing what's going to happen at this point yeah. in the book. And generally, she's pretty good at throwing something in there that you don't expect. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that is also the case with this. Yeah. We shall see. We are back with part two of Homecoming by Kate Morton. So what did you think? I don't like the ending. You don't like the ending? I want another chapter. They didn't finish it off. <laughs> what were you missing? I feel like there could have been more. Like, it kind of just, like... It ended. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just kind of... Well... And we're done now. Like... The books have to end at some point. Yes, but this whole thing, there was like, oh, she wanted a big family. Oh, big family, big family, big family. And then they literally find out that... What's her mom's name? Uh, Polly? Polly. Polly has brothers and nieces and nephews. Jess has cousins. No, we're not going to meet them, discuss them, Nothing. The, the mm. previous meetings don't count because you didn't know. So you wanted a family reunion. Yeah, like, considering the amount of, like, big deal that made about, oh, Nora always wanted a big family, you'd think there'd be like, hi, um... Mm-hmm. So we solved a, you know, decades-long mystery. Right. Also, we're your family. <laughs> hi. <laughs> like, you'd think hi. there'd be something, considering the rest... Like, if they hadn't made such a big fuss about it in the book, I'd be kind of yeah. like, okay, whatever. But... Not having that, like, meeting of any kind kind of mm-hmm. just made it feel a little bit like, oh, we're count done. Hmm. Okay. But that's just me. The rest of the book, great. But just that, I, I <laughs> read it and I'm like, no, there's not going to be another chapter. <laughs> like, I, I was reading along, reading along, and I'm like, no, it's done. <laughs> it just kind of like. It did just kind of, yeah. It just kind of ended. Well, The thing I didn't like about the ending, it just felt kind of schmaltzy to me. Like, it was about, like... Well... I guess it had to tie in the homecoming theme, right? Like, they... Yeah. Whatever. I was just kind of like, okay, yeah, let's... Whatever. It felt a little bit rushed, and I kept meaning to go back and reread it and never did. I may have just missed it, because I read three books in one day, and I don't recommend that. Did they 
ever actually figure out? Was there any like figuring out process? Just to, like that Pat was actually Polly's dad, because he was thinking about it and he was in his beach house and figuring and yada yada yada. He, he I don't to that know that they did any. But I don't think Jess and Polly ever actually had any kind of aha moment or anything. No, they did. Did they? Yeah. I don't remember it. Yeah. Um, Polly, they were talking about when they found that extra page from yeah. her diary and it was talking about the man and first they thought it was um, the groundskeeper. Yeah. Um, but then... But he didn't have any kids. Yeah. And, and then Polly was like, oh, I think I know who it might be and then it started talking about the time that she had met him. Yeah. And so I think that, to me, that indicated but that that was, was who no- she was thinking of confirmation they didn't or that she told Jess like it was kind of no I think Jess knew kind of you had to just assume that they knew yeah I think and it kind of and it wasn't definitely like uh, DNA test confirmed yeah and then there was like the Pat flashback and Mm -hmm. so that he knew and it just kind of felt like oh we have to fit this in somewhere but we don't have time to actually have, like, the big revelation for the main characters kind of thing. I don't know. There was, like, this book was really, like, I loved this book. Mm-hmm. And when I was reading the second half, I was reading one evening, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to read one more chapter. And then, and then I finished, and I was like, no, I got to <laughs> one more. Nope, one more. And I must have read, like, three or four extra chapters than I was planning to. Yeah. However, one thing I did find was, like, there was a lot of details about certain things that I wasn't really interested in. Mm-hmm. And then the more interesting things, there was less details. Yeah. You know, or like, like you said, rushed or whatever, like kind of glossed over. So like there were parts of this book that felt kind of long to me that were like slower. I kind of feel like we could have cut out some of the stuff at the beginning. Yeah. And maybe bulked out some of the stuff at the end. Yeah, maybe. Maybe out of that extra chapter. <laughs> it's also a very long book, though. Like, it's over 500 pages. It is a very long book, yeah. Like, and to be fair, I was not expecting the murderer to be who the murderer was. Yeah. And I, I, eh, I don't... I almost forgot that part. <laughs> yeah, like, the there rest was, of the story is so great and well-rounded and everything was, that you kind of forget that it is a little bit of a murder But mystery. there was so much happening there mm-hmm. at the end where, like, they figured out that Polly was uh, Thea, mm-hmm. which, which was expected. We had guessed already. I don't think anybody that made it a quarter way through the book didn't get that. Yeah, and uh, and then they were figuring out like her parentage, mm-hmm. and, and I wasn't expecting Polly slash Thea not to be what's his faces. Uh, was it the brothers? Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's his name. I didn't even think about the fact. Yeah, but it makes perfect sense. <laughs> like he was really not a part of the book at all like no like they just mentioned him sort of as he was there For and they had his funeral and being like the charming charismatic character yeah he's never actually on page not really it's always like oh yeah Thomas over there yeah um but yeah so then there was all of that and like meeting like there was the flashbacks mm-hmm. and, and like it just felt like there was so much and then oh also we figured out that the yeah. wife was the like there was a lot all at the end that I kind of feel like we could have stretched out a little bit more and yeah. made it a little less Rushed, yeah, because it was kind of <laughs> that's the best way I can describe this book. Oh, if only you all could have seen that. No, like it, it's that slow, 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 ah, everything all at once. Mm-hmm. There's it's not really my favorite style of book. Mm-hmm. I prefer a bit more of the things are happening, things are happening, things are happening, things are happening. We have a conclusion. <laughs> Yeah, you like more action. Yeah. yeah. Kind of sprinkle throughout, say, Fourth Wing-ish or Brandon Sanderson-ish. Take a shot. <laughs> With this, don't get me wrong, it's a good book. Mm-hmm. I highly recommend everybody reads it. It is excellent, even though we spoiled the ending for you. Mm-hmm. It is most definitely a journey. Yeah. But the ending felt like it was... She realized it was getting a bit on the long side and that she needed to tie things off and really didn't want to edit down any of the stuff at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I would have happily done with a few more chapters to kind of build out the ending a bit. Yeah. Like, both to kind of complete some of, like, the the flashbacks felt a little bit forced in some ways. Mm -hmm. Like, not quite sure how to uh, put this scene, to to get them the information without doing a flashback kind of thing. Mm -hmm. How many trunks can you find in an attic before it gets like, oh, trunks, trunks everywhere. (laughs) It's like an elephant herd. But this one was a hidden trunk. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) 
<laughs> and e- despite the fact that my grandmother told me not to open this trunk and burn it, I'm going to open it and snoop in it anyways. I mean, if you ever want to make sure that a trunk is definitely opened... Tell somebody not to open it? Tell somebody not to open it. Yeah, absolutely. I know. I um, found myself, like, at the beginning of the book, I really liked Nora. Mm -hmm. By the end of the book, I did not really care for her at all. I understand that she felt like she was making the best choices that she could make. However, she had to have realized that they were incredibly bad choices. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not condoning what she did. But I do understand it. I, I won't go so far as to say I didn't like Laura. The Flora. Nora. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to all you Lauras out there. Yeah, no, all you Lauras hate you. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> the pause makes that incredibly insincere. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> no, I don't dislike Nora. I don't agree with what she did. I'm not condoning it. But I do understand it to a degree. She's just not the... Um lauded character that just made her out to be, I feel like. No, of course she's not. Uh, but, like... It, it's granddaughter worshipping her grandmother for but, crying out loud. Like, but of course she also, wasn't going to be. also the way she treated Polly, right? And I feel like she kind of tried to turn Polly and Jess on each other a little bit. Whether that was intentional yeah. or not, that's what it seemed like to me. And I was like, oh, that's not... You should be fostering that relationship, not trying to I get between them. I don't know that I'd say she tried to turn them on each other, really, so much as I'd say that she tried to become Jess's mother. Mm. And that pushed Polly out and kind of didn't leave her with a place when she was already not the most self-assured and confident person out there. Right, but that like, was partly because I think of the way that Nora treated her. Because, Polly? Yeah. Yeah, Nora always treated her like she was very fragile and very, like... Yeah. She was very overprotective of her, and then she, like... I think she was kind of hard on her, too. Mm-hmm. And you would have... Everybody was like, oh, you're so lucky your mom cares about you. You have such a great relationship. Yeah, but, but reading that, I'm like, oh, you were smothering. Yeah. Like, the... Don't get me wrong. I I understand that Nora was parenting Polly slash Thea after quite a massive trauma. Mm-hmm. And that a lot of her parenting is a trauma response, essentially, with yeah. the over-smothering. But <laughs> there is a point where, seriously, back off. Yeah. They'll be okay. You have to back off. Mm-hmm. You're not doing anybody any favors by continuing to handhold. Right. Or hover. Like, it just... Yeah. It's... She became her own worst enemy by the end mm-hmm. in terms of parenting-wise. I don't want to say I condone the technical kidnapping of Thea, but at the same time, I do understand it. Mm-hmm. Because her brother, while being charming and charismatic, was kind of a crap father. He was. Like, he wasn't really there. He was very much the fun dad or no dad. Yeah. And that's no way to raise a kid if you're a single parent. Mm-mm. There was a pretty good chance that the kid would have been left with Nora anyway. Yeah, quite exactly. Quite honestly. Like, he probably didn't really want her. No. I wonder if he knew who, like, her true I parentage. I think he did. Like, he knew. He had to have known. Yeah. He was relatively smart. Do the math. Yeah. And you can't, like, if my kids died, and my wife, and my sister had a baby basically the same time, and one of my kids was missing. There's no way in heck I wouldn't be thinking that what if that kid is my kid. Well, not necessarily, though, because the Maybe. baby was with them. And they did think that, like, a dingo ate my baby. <laughs> right? Like, that's what they were kind of yeah. thinking. So, uh, I don't know. But it's not like it's a huge leap. Although, she apparently didn't know that they were dead until the police came to tell her. And... Yeah. The baby was already missing at that point. Mm-hmm. Right? So you, I, I wouldn't have necessarily assumed that she stole the baby. No, but within a couple of days, like, it's, it's not like it's a huge leap to make. Now, that, I think there'd be more of a case for that and him having that thought process if he had actually seen his kids. Yeah. I'm not deluded enough to think that guy could pick his baby out of a lineup. <laughs> <laughs> Why you have a lineup of babies? I don't know. <laughs> right. Very efficient diapering, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Simply line. <laughs> it, 
is this the baby the dingo dragged off? Is, <laughs> is this? this your baby? <laughs> Find baby number one. You don't want to know. <laughs> like, I don't think he could have actually recognized his baby. No. I don't think he would have known, oh, this baby is bigger than my baby, or, you know, that one's yeah. a very large newborn you have there. Some newborns are large. Like... He didn't know his own kid well enough to actually no. say, like, mm, that, that kid seems suspiciously large and might happen to be missing. Do you think maybe the two are connected? But I do think that that thought would have occurred to him at one point. How seriously he took it, me, considering, in fact, he didn't really come back to Australia after the whole mess. Yeah. Like, not at all. Like, not I at just, all. Like, he just left his house and... Like, I think the most suspicious thing, frankly, would have probably been Nora's behavior after. Yeah. Because she kind of went from fairly good friends with her brother to not seeing him. But was that her fault or his, though? Right? Probably both. But uh, I found it really creepy how she carried around that dead baby for, like, two days. Yeah, no, that was a little bit, uh... Nope. (laughs) That was definitely a trauma response right there. Yep. But, yeah. But she also delivered her own baby, so... I know. I also was like, oh... How? That part, I'm like, no, 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 no. Could not pay me enough money for that. Nope. Although I guess she didn't have a choice. No, she didn't. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? Yeah. And that was still very much a, again, trauma. Yeah. You just found out that your sister-in-law and all of her kids and your nieces and nephews are dead. Yeah. And then you go into labor, which is already, like, all of the emotions are running at 100% mm-hmm. right there. You don't have really logical responses to that. No. Like, the thought of get yourself to a hospital or see if you can catch the police officers is not no. and I coming don't, to mind there. My understanding was she was planning for a home birth anyways. Yeah, so it's quite common. I wonder days. if there was even a hospital nearby. Probably a midwife. Mm, yeah. Like, I'm assuming that there's midwives. Now I'd like to read you a part that made me giggle. <laughs> okay. This book was not at all funny. However, she traveled through Goondi Windy, Mori, and Dubbo. I and love that, Australian place names. That made me giggle. And so I read that sentence to my husband, and he was like, oh, Australia? And I said, <laughs> yes. So there you go. Goody Windy. They do have unique names. They really do. Yep. The only country I can think of off the top of my head that would have been my second guess if it wasn't Australia would be Wales. Oh, yeah. 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 But uh, anyways, this is not a funny book, but that line just made me giggle a little. <laughs> That's all. Mm. Yeah, I like this. The uh, the true crime book got a little more interesting. The book within the book got a little more interesting after the, sec- yeah. after the first half. But I was I s- kind of hoping the, was it David? Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping he'd have a bit more of a role, but at the same time, I'm kind of happy with what he had. Yeah. Like, he, him ultimately basically breaking the case wide open (laughs) was good because occasionally you'll have like books within books and it's like Mm -hmm. you literally just tell the story like this added nothing yeah and with this at least it did a bit more but yeah just really a lack of dads in this book though hey yeah yeah this is the book you should be reading for mother's day (laughs) <laughs> like Nora's husband was gone, Polly's like I Jess's was dad was for gone. More of a story with him. Yeah, there was like, like literally. It was nothing. basically just yeah, we couldn't have kids, he kind of disappeared and I Yeah, I want more kids and you can't give me those. So. Yeah. Ta da. Ta ta like, not ta da. Ta ta. It's kind of Yeah, I know. On the one hand I'm like, eh, that could have been more of a story. On the other hand, the fact that it is quite boring and like we just kind of drifted apart and got divorced and moved yeah. on with our lives was actually more realistic. Yeah. I think to have, like, some big drama related to that would actually have detracted from it in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. But that being said, I want my soap opera, damn it. <laughs> I want him to have fallen down an elevator shaft, and now he's back as evil Rick Ramore. <laughs> but, yeah, this definitely is a book of more about women. Mm-hmm. That being said... The murder. Meg having murdered. Mm-hmm. On some way, in, in some ways, it kind of feels out of character for her. Ye, very much so. I was like, very surprised at that. All indications were that she's basically the mother of the town. Mm-hmm. 
and if you need something, go to her, yeah. and just loves everybody. Mm-hmm. To then take the puffer fish or whatever it was yep. that your son caught to use it to kill the woman that is sleeping with your husband feels so wildly out like of character. a fit of madness. Yeah, and maybe that's what it was like, and especially then taking care of baby Thea for the couple of days or whatever it was. Like, it... I get that taking care of the baby was probably, again, a guilt response. Mm Mm-hmm. But I I think if you were to go to court, you could successfully argue for the insanity plea. Yeah, I would say. Like, it's... I don't know. Is it just, like, I wonder... Because she wanted a a girl so badly, right? Am I remembering that right from the first half? I think she Mm -hmm. really wanted to have a girl. And they also had trouble having children. Yeah. And, um suddenly this opportunity presented itself and so it was like oh here's my chance yeah now i can get revenge on her and then but it wasn't like it was a long plotted out thing it was kind of like happenstance yeah i happen to have a puffer fish and well, some yeah. fish paste but which maybe also sounds disgusting uh, yeah right maybe she was thinking about it though or she was like how can i get my revenge and then suddenly her son had this fish and so it was like but if you're thinking about how to get her revenge would you be sending her the like little baby jacket that you knit specifically for your own daughter that you're never now gonna have well i'm gonna kill her and i'm gonna steal her child i don't think it was that thought out because i don't know by I... indication she it, it kind of got out of hand mm. because what's her main character's name uh isabel yeah never shared the fish paste never yeah because she apparently really liked the fish paste yeah was I, your plan to take all the kids? Yeah, I don't know. Because i got to tell you, your one son's not going to be happy with his new stepsister. Right. <laughs> like. Uh, yeah, I, I don't and, know. And I'm just. It's still. How would you take the kid? They still have a parent. An absent parent. Parent's still a parent. Legally, who, a parent is still a parent. Who does not care two figs about. It's not that he doesn't care, I don't think. It's just that he's highly distracted and fun dad, not dad dad. <laughs> No, he's... Like, uh, uh, if just Isabel had died, he'd be back, and he'd be taking care of the kids until he hired a nanny. Maybe. Like, I don't necessarily think that, but... He would come back, and he'd hire a nanny, and then they'd go off on their merry way. <laughs> totally different book. <laughs> totally different book. <laughs> I don't think there was any actual forethought or planning, really, apart from puffer fish i know this can kill somebody the opportunity presented itself the atop- so opportunity. It was like the atop- opportunity <laughs> the opportunity presented itself and she took it not really thinking of the consequences just kind of in the heat of the moment going mm-hmm. this woman has slept with my husband and somehow it's not his fault well yeah yeah also like if you're poisoning anybody yeah right uh, but basically just taking the chance and it got out of hand, and by all accounts, yeah. she regretted it. Well, yeah, because it is out of character for her. It's yeah. not It's not who she is. Yeah. And it was, like, I was, it was completely unexpected. Completely. Like, I did not I think. I was ex- suspecting Marcus before that. <laughs> I was thinking it was Nora. You, were, you really don't like Nora, do you? I don't know. I just had it in my head that maybe it was Nora. I never at all thought it was Nora. I, I was sure Nora had taken Thea. Mm-hmm. For sure, that. How she had taken Thea, that I was still iffy on. It was quite the convoluted system. That there. really was. <laughs> leave the baby in the woods, take the baby away, leave the baby in the woods again. Good gravy, just leave the baby alone. <laughs> Poor thing just wants to sleep. Uh, yes. Like. Because I couldn't, I couldn't conceive of, like, I, I knew it wasn't Isabel, but I couldn't conceive of who else it could have been. Mm-hmm. Right? And Nora was there. Yeah. And she had the opportunity I didn't know what her motive would have been, but... That's the thing, like... Because by all accounts, they had a good relationship, so why would she... I, I never thought it was Nora. To me, it just didn't fit. Nora no. being so desperate to have a large family, don't kill off the person that's making half that family. Right. No, I know. <laughs> like, I know, but it they was... They made four out of the six members of your family. You keep them around. They're the baby <laughs> factory. Like, baby factory. I think the mystery part of it was decent in that you mm. it kind of kept you guessing like you knew that it was the and Polly the same person right. like that that was pretty obvious but the rest of it kept you guessing long enough mm-hmm. that it was kind of oh hmm, cool like I did not anticipate that Meg 
That's her name? That was the murderer? Yes, Meg. And I did not anticipate that Percy was the father. The Percy was a pet. Percy. Percy. Where's Pat come in? I don't know who Pat mm-hmm. is. I mean, the main police officer. Yeah, I didn't think that... I didn't even <coughs> consider that Percy was the father. It, it makes no, perfect like sense were, when you think about those were the fact two that things. her husband's after, off and out, absent. But not Percy, because by all accounts, Percy seemed quite devoted to Meg. Yes, and what's better than devotion than the threat of getting caught? You're so cynical. Yes, I am. But those were two things that I did not see coming, mm-hmm. and I, I like that in a book. Yes, definitely. When things happen that I don't anticipate. I mean, quite honestly, the characters I feel sorry for the most are the boys, Kurt and Marcus. Yeah. Because they just, they just get dumped on. But they seem to have turned out okay. They turned out okay. And that's one of the things I did enjoy about the book is the fact that you kind of got to see their life. Mm-hmm. Which I don't want to say completed. But, like, <laughs> there was so much potential. Mm-hmm. Like, Marcus being the hothead, Kurt being the, the smart one. Mm-hmm. And then this one event kind of flip the whole thing yeah. and Kurt is now the local boy mowing lawns doing the whatever else he does mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't remember and Marcus becoming the successful lawyer to kind of make up for what he did Yeah, like I found that very interesting kind of all based off this one event that was very closely related to them although they didn't really they know didn't it know. Like, and not that Marcus actually really did well he, he took the baby he, but he spied he spied on people mm. Like, he knew his dad was having yeah. an affair. And he took the baby. Yeah. Which, I would argue, is actually what probably saved the baby. Yeah, probably. Because, who knows? Those dang dingoes. Those dang dingoes, yep. And you got drop bears and God knows what. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very possible that, considering how hot it was, Thea may have died. Yeah. If Marcus hadn't taken her. It's very possible that he saved her life. Should you return the baby? Yes, you should. You should return the baby or tell the police that you took the baby. I would argue for the most part, other than the mystery and whatnot surrounding it, some family secrets and probably Nora's hovering over Polly and Jess. End results probably very close to the same. Yeah. Meg and Percy stayed married. Mm -hmm. Kurt and Marcus basically flipped career paths, but Nora ended up raising Thea. Do you honestly think it would have gone any different? No. Like... Given the murder and everything, I I still think that there's a pretty good chance that if Thomas had come home, if the kids were still alive, or if Thea was still alive and found, Nora would be raising her. Yeah. Thomas would not have stayed with those kids. Thomas would not have stayed with those kids. It's in, mm-hmm. like, I 110% believe that Nora would have fought to keep those kids with her, mm-hmm. or at least very, very much in her vicinity. Mm-hmm. It kind of ended up being the same thing. Yep. We had a long story just to kind of end up with the same results. Right. But with less mystery. Yeah. Like. Yeah. No. It's true. It's kind of just come from full circle, essentially. Mm Mm-hmm. One of the things that is, again, a little bit disappointing was the fact that Jess's father is just kind of like this guy. Yeah. Like, yeah, sure, he writes. And they're kind of used that as an excuse, and that's why she writes. But it's just kind of flat. It was sad that. Nora made Polly leave him Mm -hmm. for what to me did not seem like. It wasn't a good enough reason. No. No. It really wasn't. I was like, that's silly. Yeah. And Polly needs to get a backbone. It felt a little bit like there's just like, no men. No men. Yeah. Get rid of the men. I know. No men and lots of infertility. Yep. Apparently Australia had an infertility problem at the time. Hmm. It's emus. Emus? Why the emus? It the 1930s. Never mind. It's the emu war. It's the cassowaries. There was an actual emu war, and if you look up the emu war of Australia, there was a decisive emu victory. (laughs) The emus won the emu war. Well, I should hope so. Who else is going to win the emu war? The Australian army. I'm going to have to look into this a little more, I think. It's fascinating. You definitely should. Emus won. Just think what the cassowaries would have done. Cassowaries would own Australia by now. Things are terrifying. Those things are fascinating. They're living dinosaurs. They are terrifying. They are so cool. Anyway. Let's just say I'm thankful for cages. If we start going off on Jess's random Australian animals, we're <laughs> never ending this episode. I think that pretty much covers it. Like, her, her father being just a random guy is... Again, it feels a little bit like the elimination of any father figures, but at the same time, mm-hmm. it's fine. It's, it happens. Yeah, that's true, but like... Men being boring and being removed from stories <laughs> happens. <laughs> but let's cut out all the men from the entire book. Even Thomas doesn't show up. No. 
Percy's mm. the only man. Percy's the only father figure, yeah. really, in this book. And by all accounts, he was a decent one. Yeah. Like, it sounded like he tried hard. I do like the fact that polythea. <laughs> Polytheism. <laughs> Sorry. Nerd. Um, I do like the fact that Polythea, um, Marcus, Percy, whatever, they had, like, their, their family dinner mm-hmm. flashback thing. I do like the fact that they had that. Even though they didn't know. Even though they didn't know, at least there was something. Well, Percy, I think, kind of suspected. Percy figured it out. Yeah. But I, I really, it irks the heck out of me in books when people are, like, this close and just miss each other. Yeah. Whether, like, that be mystery, murder, whatever, where mm-hmm. it's, like, the killer's turning the corner as the police come around the other corner. It just... I know. So close! I know. I'm really glad this book didn't do that. <laughs> Yep, I agree. And um, I would argue that Polly would have been happier raised by Percy and Meg than Nora. Probably. I think Nora did her best, considering yeah. the trauma, circumstances, and the fact she definitely should have had therapy. Yes. Lots of it. Lots, lots. and lots and lots of it. Mm-hmm. I do think Polly would have still been happier, though. Yeah, she would have had some brothers. That would have been fun. A little less smothery. Yep. Here's a fun fact. Don't smother your children. <laughs> Do you have any fun facts? I do. I didn't know which way to go with these ones, so we're going to talk about Australia a little bit. While the town of Tambula featured in the novel is fictional, the Adelaide Hills are not, and that will be the focus of today's fun facts. The Adelaide Hills region is located in the southern Mount Lofty Ranges, east of the city of Adelaide, in the state of South Australia. The largest town in the area, Mount Barker, is one of Australia's fastest growing towns. Before British colonization of South Australia, the area was inhabited by the Paramang people. I don't know if I said that right, but... The Adelaide Hills were among the first areas of South Australia to be settled by European settlers. A number of towns in the hills were started as German settlements. Hondorf and Lobethal are two examples. Please excuse my pronunciation. The original town names and architecture still reflect this. Descendants of these first settlers and others of German origin still reside in the area. The Adelaide Hills wine region includes all areas of the hills above 300 meters or 980 feet. The elevation leads to cooler nights during the warm summer months, important for increasing the flavor of wines during the ripening season and higher rainfall. So yeah, there is, my understanding is there's quite a large wine region in that area. Never would have thought I mean, it makes perfect sense when you actually think about it, but going over a certain elevation level. Mm -hmm. Gumaracha is home to the largest rocking horse in the world, standing at 18.3 meters or 60 feet, approximately the height of a six-story building, and open to the public. It serves to advertise an adjacent wooden toy factory and wildlife park. Okay. Yeah, I know. I thought Canada was the only place that had world's largest things, because we have the world's largest everything. No. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just kidding. Good. <laughs> you should see Turkmenistan. The ruler of Turkmenistan, such dictator, is basically obsessed with getting world records. I feel like Guinness World Records. So he's got like the largest white marble horse and the largest number of white clad marble buildings. Or Interesting. Yeah. He's also like disturbingly obsessed with horses. It's disturbing. Anyways, yeah, I didn't really mean that, but because there's so many, like, it feels like there's so many things in southern Manitoba that are, like, whatever. World's largest. Or your blank here. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, what Saskatchewan should go. Saskatchewan, world's largest blank. <laughs> Sorry. You're not as boring as everyone burn. says, but everybody says you're boring. <laughs> burn, 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 burn. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I have for fun facts today. Hmm. A little history on the area of the Adelaide Hills. Definitely sounds like an interesting region. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I know. I need to go back to Australia. Cause Just pop that on your to-do list. Yep. <laughs> I, I am. Wash dishes, laundry, go to Australia. <laughs> right? <laughs> Hug a drop bear, don't. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, no, like, it's so big. There's so much to see there and mm-hmm. like we didn't even see a fraction of it yeah it's got such but, distinct regions as well that it's kind yeah of... well that's the other thing like every place you go is completely different mm-hmm. and now we have somebody who we can visit there so nice. uh, there is some incentive to go 
There you go. Now you have an excuse. You have to go there before they come back here, and you don't want that. Right. You're not going to visit them here. You Although, visit them there. originally, she was supposed to be there for, like, six months, and now it's been, like, a year and a half. Sounds like she's making good life choices. <laughs> And possibly, like, another year. Well, I think her visa runs out in fall, maybe. Mm. You better get on it, then. So, no, I'm not. I will likely <laughs> never, ever return to Australia. <gasps> no, don't think like that. Uh, think positive, not negative. Unless I win the lottery, or... Think sensible, not negative. <laughs> somebody uh, somebody leaves me a lot of money in their will. We read the wrong book for that. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, if anybody tells you not to open a trunk, definitely open that trunk. Always open it. Always. That is... Yeah, yeah. I will say, though, when they, like, listened to the tape and there wasn't anything, my brain was just like, flip it over, come on! And then, like, right? there's the whole thing of, like, oh, yes, and then there's something on the other side, and I'm like, duh. Duh. I know, that's exactly what like, I was thinking. flip it over, of course you flip it flip over. Flip over the tape. freaking tape, man. <laughs> I mean, I might just be old, but come on. But these people are older. Like, yeah. Jess was born in the 70s. Polly should definitely know. They should know how cassette tapes work. Yeah. Come on, people. Shameful. I understand that my children don't know how cassette tapes work, but I still do. Yeah. So. You must impart that knowledge onto the, the young generation. Yeah, well, we do have a cassette player. Daughter number two uh, mm-hmm. has used a cassette player. There you go. Um, well, it's Mike's cassette player. Sorry. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be theirs. But he taught her how to use it. She listened to some of his old tapes for a while. One she was, day she shall be the wise one of the old ways. She was really into it for a while. <laughs> I'm really tired. I can't focus anymore. I can't even complete a sentence. Any last thoughts on this book other than people should read it? You and should. Sorry for spoiling the ending and all the mystery. Yeah. And read it anyway because it's mean, so good. We were pretty upfront about that with this podcast. However, uh, you should still read it anyways. Yeah, it's still a good um, book. It is a very good book. Very well written. And Kate. sometimes I like reading a book after I know the ending, because then you can kind of connect some of the plot points mm. going later on. Third shot of the day. Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> <laughs> His books are so long mm-hmm. that oftentimes after I go through them, wait a little bit and go through them again, because now it's like, ah, ah, he's connected everything even more smartly than I thought he did. Hmm. What a genius. All hail Sanderson. I think that deserves two shots, if anybody's <laughs> keeping track. Um, Just take the bottle. <laughs> seriously, though, in my opinion, you can't go wrong with Kate Morton in general. So if you're looking for something that we haven't spoiled, go to her back catalog and read one of those, because they're also quite good. Yes. And if um, you don't want to read a book and don't have time, just stare at the cover, because it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I keep thinking, why can't I walk down that lane Yeah. to a beautiful, gorgeous manor house at the end? Whoever did the cover design, I mean... Excellent work. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Top notch. Keep doing what you're doing. Yep. Yep, that's the end. (laughs) And look, there's no peanut. (laughs) So that's what we thought of the book, but those are just our opinions, and we'd like to hear yours. Leave us a comment. Thanks for joining us for Books and Banter, and thanks to our editor, Linda. We'll see you next time.